we will proceed now with Christianity teaching. We will view the different sayings of Saint Augustine of Hippo and Saint Thomas Aquinas. In this section, new body of philosophical writings that sets forth new problems is discussed. In the 5th century, Augustine's writing is considered to be the most influential in the early medieval period. This section looks at the reasonableness of belief in God's existence. In doing so, we shall read the statement, God exists as a hypothesis, which we call the theistic hypothesis. This means we shall ask whether or not the existence of God provides the best explanation of the existence of the world as we know it. Religious people definitely do not treat God's existence as a hypothesis, for God is a constant presence, rather than being a whose existence is accepted as the best explanation of available evidence. In neither the Jewish nor Christian Bibles is there any argument for God's existence. For the biblical writers, proving God's existence would be as pointless as trying to prove the existence of the air we breathe. So the religious problem reflected in the Old Testament narratives is not atheism but polytheism. Not denial of God but the worship of too many gods. Likewise, in the New Testament, the reality of God is unquestioned due to the conviction that in Jesus Nazareth, the eternal God became flesh and dwelt among human beings. In its earliest missionary in the wars, Christians directed their preachings to Jews who accepted the reality of God. It was only later when Christian missionaries confronted a variety of naturalistic philosophy that they felt the need to argue philosophically for the existence of God. However, even then, the task was not considered too formidable for the basic structure of the arguments. So let's have here St. Uh, Augustine of Hippo. According to him, philosophy is more sapiental, or the love of wisdom. Its aim is to produce happiness. However, for Augustine, wisdom is not just an abstract logical construction, but it is substantially existent as the divine logos. Hence, philosophy is the love of God. It is then religious. Teachings of Christianity are based on the love of God, which Augustine's are Aquinas and Almsam's arguments are basically rooted. For Augustine, Christianity is representing the full revelation of the true God, is the only full and true philosophy. However, we can love only that which we know when it comes to this knowledge of God. It begins with faith and is made perfect by understanding. All knowledge leads to God so that faith supplements and enlightens reason that it may proceed to even richer and fuller understanding. Indeed, without this enlightenment of faith, reason invariably sooner or later goes astray. We must first of all prove that truth is attainable by reason. Does not all knowledge come from sensation? And does not the sense constantly deceive us? So for St. Augustine, even if we grant that the senses yield no certainty in themselves, so that we can always doubt their reports, one thing we cannot doubt, and that is the fact that we doubt, here then is absolutely certainty. Now, if we doubt, we are, and as doubting, we must be living and rational beings. We have been established with certain, uh, certainty, three grades of level of existence. So we have mere being, living being, and rational being. This certainty has been established not by turning outward to sensation to the external world, but by turning inward to the soul itself. The lowest form of knowledge is that of sensation, yet as we ascend higher to knowledge, of rational principles. It is the will which directs the mind's eyes to truth, first invading to the mind itself, then upward to the eternal truth. In his earlier writings, Augustine speaks in platonic praise of humanity as a rational soul using a mortal body. Later, he favors man as a rational substance constituted of soul and body. In both cases, the soul retains its proper entity and the soul apart from the body may be considered as a substance.
Only the pure in heart shall see God. The progress in knowledge and wisdom is not only speculative, it is more fundamentally practical and moral. According to Augustine's theory of knowledge is at one with the procedures of speculative mysticism. So from this mystic love and intuition of God, follow all the principles to direct humanity and in all their undertakings. For St. Thomas Aquinas, another medieval philosopher, of all creatures, human beings have the unique power to change themselves and things for the better. His philosophy is best grasped in his treatise, Summa Contra Gentiles and Summa Theologica. Aquinas considers that human being as a moral agent. We are both spiritual and body elements, the spiritual and material. The unity between both elements indeed help us to understand our complexity as human beings. Our spirituality separates us from animals. It differentiates moral dimensions of our fulfillment and actions. Through our spirituality, we have a conscience. Thus, whether we choose to be good or evil becomes our responsibility. So the concept of St. Thomas will be elucidated in the next lesson.